لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير وإليه المصير وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدًا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يقول الله تعالى بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ونعوذ بالله تعالى من النار We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We glorify him We seek his assistance and his aid We seek his forgiveness and his pardon Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides No one can misguide that person Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevents from guidance No one can guide that person We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For allowing us to reach another blessed day of Jum'ah as we have seen in the past uh, week or two weeks or so in this country, there have been two major hurricanes that have struck the southern part of the country, southern part of the country in Florida and that area. And when we ponder upon events like this, uh, it is a good time to reflect. And this is what Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us in the Quran about how the wind works. It is for a person who thinks about it, it is a sign. It is a sign. As Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مِنْ رِسْقٍ فَأَحْيَا بِهِ الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا وَتَسْرِيفِ الْرِيَاحِ آيَاتِ آيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يَعْقِلُونَ Allah Azza wa Jalla says, and in the alternation of the night and the day, and in what Allah sends down from the sky of provision and gives life thereby to the earth, after its lifelessness, and directing of the winds, directing of the winds. These are signs for people who use their intellect, signs for people who think. If we think about it, we see that the wind is a very important part of the ecosystem and is a very beneficial part of the ecosystem and how the world works. All right, the, the, the wind, this is the wind that drives the clouds and brings the rain. This is the wind that uh, comes and makes the, the uh, things get fertilized and so on. The wind has a lot of functions. If you study uh, science, you'll know the function of the wind. The wind is very important. And Allah Azza wa Jalla alludes to this in the Quran in several verses. And He calls it uh, a mercy. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ يُرْسِيلَ الرِّيَاحَ مُبَشِّرَاتٍ وَلْيُذِيقَكُمْ مِنْ رُحْمَتِهِ And from His signs, from Allah's signs, is that he sends the wind. And it is, as he calls it, glad tidings. The wind brings glad tidings. It brings the rain. It brings cool breeze. It has a lot of benefits. He sends this wind as glad tidings. And so that you can taste the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the water that will come from the rain, which the, the wind will drive the clouds and then produce the rain afterwards. In another verse, Allah Azza wa Jalla talks about the, the, the function of the wind driving the clouds. Wallahu alladhi arsala riyaha fatuthiru sahaban fasuqnahu ila baladim mayyitin fa'ahyayna bihi al-ard ba'da mawtiha kathalika al-nushur. And it is Allah who sends the winds so that they raise up the clouds and we drive them to a deadline and revive therein the earth after its death. As such will be the resurrection. So the wind has a lot of benefit. It is extremely important. We cannot... The, the, the earth cannot function without the wind. 
But when we think deeply, we see the creative power of Allah Azza wa Jal. That this same wind that brings so much benefit, that we cannot live without, the same wind Allah Azza wa Jal can use it as a means of destruction, to bring torment and destruction. The very same wind that brings mercy, that brings life, Allah Azza wa Jal can use it, the same exact wind, and bring with it destruction. And this is a sign. As Allah Azza wa says, and the, the changing of the, the winds, going from one direction to the other, sometimes bringing mercy, but also sometimes bringing punishment. This is from the signs of Allah Azza wa Jal. That the wind is a soldier from the soldiers of Allah Azza wa Jal. And he can direct it however he wants. So usually the wind is beneficial for us. But Allah Azza wa Jal, he can make that wind, which is a source of mercy, and he can make it in a source, make it as a source of destruction. And we have seen people being destroyed by winds today, as well in the past. Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us about the people of Ad who were destroyed by a wind. The people of Ad were destroyed by a wind when they had rejected their messenger, Hud alayhi salam, and they were giving warning after warning after warning, and they were told that a punishment is coming to you. They still disbelieved. And they still were very stubborn. Even to the very last moment, they saw the clouds come in. This is a cloud of punishment, bringing wind of punishment. And yet they were still so stubborn that they said that this is uh, a cloud that is going to bring us rain. They said that this is, that this is a cloud that's bringing us rain. And they started to rejoice and get happy. And Allah Azza wa says that rather, Rather, it is the thing that they have hastened. It is a wind that is bringing a painful punishment. So the same wind that we rely on, that brings mercy, that brings benefits, Allah Azza wa can turn it and He can change it and He can use it in a way that will bring destruction and harm. And this is from the power of Allah Azza wa And we can say this for a lot of things as well. We can say this for the water. We, we cannot live without water. The rain, we cannot live without the water from, coming from the sky. But that same rain and that same water that Allah Azza wa Jal brings from the sky, which is a source of mercy and a source of life, Allah can use that same rain as punishment and a, as a cause of destruction. As we saw with the people of Nuh السلام, they were destroyed by the flood. We sent Nuh السلام, and he stayed amongst his people for 1,000 years minus 50. So 950 years. And the floods came and, uh, and it, it, it took them and they were why they were wrongdoers. So they were destroyed by the same rain that brings mercy. Allah used it and flipped it around and he brought with it punishment. Once Rasulullah was delivering the khutbah, and it was a time of drought. There was a lack of rain. So a man came very desperate in a panic, in a panic mode. And he called out, why Rasulullah is giving the khutbah? Ya Rasulullah, halakat al-amwal wa anqata'ad al-subul. Fad'u Allah an yughithana. He said that, O oh Rasulullah, our wealth has been destroyed. The roots have been cut off. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send us some rain. And Rasulullah right there and then he raised his hands and he made dua for the rain. And as soon as he finished that dua, the clouds started to come. And it started to rain. And it rained. And it rained and it rained. And it rained for seven consecutive days until the next Jum'ah and still raining. The same man comes back again. And this time, he's also in a state of panic, but this time he wants the rain to stop. He comes again he says, Ya Rasulullah, halakat al-amwal wa subul fad'u Allah an yumsikaha and you seek her so he said that oh Rasulullah the our wealth has been destroyed the roots have been cut off ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stop it stop the rain from coming and so Rasulullah raised his hands again and he said Allahumma hawalayna la alayna oh Allah make it go around us but don't make it come directly on us so the same rain in which Allah Azza wa Jal uses to give life and mercy and benefit for the people it can also be a source of destruction. 
And we can say the same for uh, many other things. Food. We cannot live without food or water and drink. But a person can, by that same food, you can become poisoned. Either you know, eat something that has poison in it, something harmful, or even you eat something that is uh, over a long period of time that's not healthy and it slowly kills you and it slowly takes away your health. We can say the same thing about food. We can say the same thing about drink. We can say the same thing about uh, the, the sun, right? The sun, which is the source of sunlight. It is a source of heat. It is a source of nutrients, vitamin D. But the same sun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can cause with it destruction. It can be the cause of people dying if there's too much heat. People pass away out of, uh, out of, uh, out of extreme heat. That happens all the time. The same sun which we are dependent on, Allah can use that sun to be a source of destruction. Or the earth, the earth which we are on and has, Allah has placed it for us to have as a source of uh, settlement. When Allah Azza wa sent Adam alayhi salam down to the earth, He told him, you're going down to the earth, وَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرٌ وَمَتَاعٌ إِلَى حين. You're going down to the earth, it will be a place of settlement, a stability. We can walk on the earth, and when you walk on the earth, we don't, uh, we don't bobble around, we don't uh, uh, go left and right. If you, if anybody ever has a chance to go on a, a, another celestial body, where the, the rules of gravity are different, a person goes to the moon or any other place, they can't walk, you can't walk, right? You can't walk properly without going, bobbling back and forth. On the earth, we walk very easily. It's been made for us as a source of stability, as a source of comfort. But the same earth, Allah Azza wa Jalla can make it shake to the point where we can't even walk straight and everything will collapse on us. So, and these are signs for people who reflect. The, the, the wind and the water and the rain and the sun and everything else that Allah Azza wa Jalla uses has placed it for our benefit. It can also be a cause for destruction if Allah Azza wa Jalla wills and if he wills. And so, this is why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would, whenever the, the, the wind would come, he would make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to ask for the good of it. Allahumma inni, inni as'aluka khayraha wa khayra ma fiha wa khayra ma usilat bihi. Uh, oh Allah, I ask you by the good of it, and the good that is in it, and the good in which uh, it has been sent with. Wa a'udhu bika min sharriha wa sharri ma fiha wa sharri ma usilat bihi. And I seek refuge in you, O Allah, from the evil of it, the evil that is in it, and the evil that which has been sent with. So Rasulullah recognized that these things can go either way. And so we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it beneficial for us. When the wind comes, we ask, we ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to make it a source of good for us. Because it can, as we have seen in this country, in other parts of the uh, of the country, and in past events and all over the world, that these uh, the, these natural disasters, or uh, they can come and they can cause a lot of destruction. And the wind and everything else, it is nothing but commands following the commands of Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is why Rasulullah says in the Hadith that you should not curse the wind. لا تلعن الريح. Do not turn, uh, curse the wind. فإنها مأمورة because it is only following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person, when these winds come, you don't talk about, bad about the wind and complain about the wind because it is only following the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't have any choice on, it, on its own. فَإِنَّهَا مَأْمُورَ It is only following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is in control. And these uh, events are reminders that Allah is in control. That Allah azza wa jal can destroy whenever He wants using the very same things that bring us benefit, bring us life, and are vital for our living. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us from natural disasters. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us from trials and tribulations, and to protect us uh, from trials and tribulations in the natural world, as well as in trials and tribulations that may affect us in our religion. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد الله عز وجل سأذكر القرآن وذكر فإن ذكرة تنفع المؤمنين remind for indeed uh, reminders benefit the believers so a slight change of topic إن شاء الله it is always good for us to be reminded of our duties as Muslims and amongst those duties is the salah and amongst the salawat that we are uh, obligated to perform is what we are here for today which is Salat al Jum'ah. so it is uh, very important that we uh, every once in a while we remind ourselves about the importance of this salah and salah in general but of course this salah that we are coming to once a week uh, and performing so Salat al Jum'ah. It is, of course, uh, as we should all know, it is an obligation on every sane adult male who is a resident and who does not have any uh, legitimate excuse. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, "Ya ayuha aladina amenu, ida nudi al salati min yom al Jumaati, fasgau ila dikrillah." O you who believe, when the call to Jumaah is made, then rush towards the remembrance. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعِ And leave Leave trade Leave business Leave work Leave any of the things that will distract you From the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In another verse Allah azawajal says يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُلْهِكُمْ أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ All you who believe Do not let your wealth Nor your children Distract you from, from the remembrance Of Allah azawajal So Jum'ah is uh, an obligation for males who have reached the age of adulthood, who are sane, who are resident, who don't have any of the uh, excuses that will allow a person to miss Jum'ah. And Rasulullah has uh, warned severely against missing Jum'ah without excuse. Uh, and there's several hadith on this about the severe warning of those who miss Jum'ah without excuse. لا عن ودعهم الجمعات أو لا يختمن الله على قلوبهم ثم لا يكونن من الغافلين. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم says that people will either stop neglecting the Jumu'ah prayers or Allah will seal their hearts or Allah will seal their hearts and then they will be amongst the negligent. In another hadith, رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he warns about missing Jumu'ah especially if a person makes this a habit. To the point where they miss three, three Jumas, consecutive Jumas. Man taraka thalatha Jumain tahawun and biha taba Allahu ala qalbihi. Whoever misses three Jumas out of negligence, out of negligence, then Allah will place a seal over that person's heart. So this is not something to take lightly when Allah, when Rasulullah is threatening that a person, their heart is going to be sealed, then you have to really think twice about. Prioritizing anything else but the Jum'ah. From the important uh, adab and etiquette of the Jum'ah, and some of the scholars have said this is even obligatory, is to take the bath. Take a bath on the day of Jum'ah. When, if anyone you enters the day of Jum'ah, then he should take a bath. And the closer you can take the bath to Jum'ah, the better. So if you can take a bath right before you come to Jum'ah, this is the best thing. The closer it is to Jum'ah, the better. Of course, some of us are coming from work and other places, school. So you can take the bath anytime from the beginning of the day of Jum'ah, which is from Fajr. So once Fajr comes in, you can start uh, the, the, the ghusl of Jum'ah from then. But the later you take it, the better it is. Because the pers- purpose of the bath is to come to Jum'ah fresh and clean. It is recommended, of course, as well to... Uh, for the males to, to wear the to perfume, uh, to, uh, for everyone to wear proper clothing, nice clothing, the best clothing, to enter into the masjid, come to the masjid with calmness and serenity, to not harm anybody, to not annoy anybody, and to observe the, uh, the, the, the prayer of entering the masjid. Rasulullah says in hadith, Man, man iqtasala yawm al-jum'ah, wa masa min tibin in kana lahu, وَلَبِسَ مِنْ أَحْسَنِ ثِيَابِهِ ثُمَّ خَرَجَ وَعَلَيْهِ السَّكِينَةِ حَتَّى تَأْتِيَ الْمَسْجِدِ فَرَكَعَ إِنْ بَدَى لَهُ وَلَمْ يُؤْذِي أَحَدًا ثُمَّ أَنْصَتَ إِذَا خَرَجَ إِمَامُهُ حَتَّى يُصَلِّي كَانَتْ كَفَّارَ لِمَا بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ الْجُمْعَةِ الْأُخْرَى Rasulullah says that whoever takes a bath 
on the day of Jum'ah and they apply perfume if they have soap and they wear the best clothing and they come to the salah and they come to the masjid with calmness and serenity and when they come they offer the salah the, the salah of greeting the masjid and then they are quiet until the imam comes out until he finishes the salah then this will be an expiation of sins from one Jum'ah until the next and of course it is uh, recommended as well to come early for the Jum'ah and Rasulullah mentions in the hadith that there are several times when this person can come wh whoever comes in that earliest time frame the earliest time frame it is as if they have sacrificed a camel whoever comes in the next time frame after that it will be as if they have sacrificed a cow whoever comes after that it will be as if they sacrificed a ram whoever comes after that it's as if they sacrifice a chicken and whoever comes after that in the next time frame it is as if they have offered uh, an egg and after that this is when the angels will stop recording the names who have come the angels they will close their books and they will sit down and listen to the khutbah so at that point the names are no longer written you've lost that opportunity of having your name written amongst those who have come early so it is very important to try to come as early as possible if a person comes to the masjid they should offer the tahiyyat al-masjid the greeting the salah to greet the masjid two rak'at to greet the masjid and this should even be done even if the imam is on the minbar speaking and giving the khutbah and this comes in the hadith idha ja'a adukum yawm al-jum'ah wal imam yakhtab fal yarka' rak'atayn wal yatajawwaz fihima Rasulullah says in the hadith, and this a man had come in and he entered a bit late while Rasulullah was giving the khutbah. And Rasulullah asked him, Did you pray? He said, I did not pray. And so Rasulullah told him, Come, get up and pray, and but make it light. Anyone when you come to the masjid, even if the Imam is on the, uh, on the minbar, he's speaking and he's delivering the khutbah, pray the two rak'at, but make it light. Don't prolong it. Make it light. From the etiquette of the Jum'ah as well is to remain silent. Allah Azawajal says in the verse, فَاسْعَوْ إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ This is a reminder to, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an opportunity to hear the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the words of His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa This is not a time to be in, involved or distracted with anything else. And so it is important to remain silent and be attentive while the khutbah is being delivered. And you should not even tell somebody else to be quiet. Even if you tell somebody else to be quiet, Rasulullah SAW says that this is considered to be a form of idle speech. Rasulullah SAW says that even if you are telling somebody else to be quiet, some people might think that, well, I, I'm just telling them to be quiet. This is something good. No, Rasulullah SAW says, don't, don't even tell anybody else to be quiet. If you tell somebody else to be quiet, you're not, you yourself are not talking. But you told somebody else to be quiet, this is considered to be as if you are talking as well. So if somebody is talking and somebody else is uh, uh, making a noise or anything else, uh, chatter in the, in, in, during the khutbah, the time to advise them would be after, after the, after the salah, after the khutbah, not while the khutbah is going on. Aside from talking, fiddling with things, playing with things, these are also things that Rasulullah has warned against. وَمَنْ مَسَّ الْحَصَى فَقَدْ لَغَى Rasulullah says in the hadith that Whoever fiddles and plays with rocks, back in, the, back in those days they used to have pebbles and rocks on the floors. Whoever is playing and fidgeting with the rocks, then they have engaged in idle action. We don't have the rocks anymore, but you might have what well, we can consider the phones or anything else that a person might fidget, fidget with and be distracted with in our day and age. If a person falls asleep, then they should get up and go somewhere else. وَمَنْ نَعَسَ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ فَلْيَتَحَوَّلْ Rasulullah says in the hadith that whoever he, 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 he falls asleep, he gets drowsy and sleepy, let him get up and move somewhere else. That will inshallah wake him up or you can go to the bathroom and wash your face. But uh, if you find yourself drowsy, you can go get up and move somewhere else. And lastly, when we are coming to, uh, to the salah itself, when we are praying the salah itself, salah al jumuah is only valid in jama'ah in the jama'ah you cannot pray salat al jumuah by yourself so when you are praying the salat al jumuah you make the intention that i am praying salat al jumuah with the jama'ah jama'ah behind the imam 
And if you come late for whatever reason, and you find that the Imam has finished the Salah, you have missed the Jama'ah, then you cannot pray two rakat of Jum'ah. You have to pray four rakat of Dhuhr. Very important. If you miss the Salah, you have to pray Dhuhr. The Salah of Jum'ah is not valid to pray by yourself. You have to pray it in the Jama'ah. If you miss the Jama'ah, then you have to pray it as Dhuhr. So this is if you miss the, the Jama'ah in its entirety. If you catch the Jama'ah, you catch the Imam in the first rakat, then you are good. You have met, caught the, uh, the Jum'ah. If you catch the Imam in the second rakat before he makes these, the Rukur, then you get up and you offer the one rakat that you have missed. If you catch the Imam after he has finished the second rakat, he has finished his Rukur from the second rakat, now you have missed both rakats. You have missed both rakats. What do you do? According to the majority of the ulama, majority of the scholars, you get up and pray dhuhr. Even if you catch him in the sitting position, you catch the imam in the sitting position, but you have, met, you have missed both rakats. Then you get up and you pray salat al-dhuhr. Intended to make salat al-dhuhr, you miss the jum'ah. You get up and you pray for rakat dhuhr. And this is supported by the hadith, man adraka rak'atan min al-jum'ati faqad adraka salat. Whoever reaches and catches one rak'ah, which will be the second before the Imam gets up from the second rukur, then you have caught the Jum'ah and you have caught the Salah. But if you catch the Imam after that, then the safest thing, and this is the position of the majority of the scholars, is to get up and offer four rak'ah as dhuhr because you have missed the, the, uh, the Jum'ah, because you have not caught the two rak'ahs of Jum'ah. So these are important rulings that we should all be aware of, and it's uh, beneficial for us to have these reminders every once in a while. As we are coming here every single week, we should be aware of the obligations that is on us of Salat al Jum'ah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us beneficial knowledge. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us, to have mercy on us, to save us from trials and tribulations. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the good in this life and the good in, in the next life, save us from the punishment, the fire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to heal all of those of us amongst us who are sick and from the Ummah at large. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on all those who have passed away from amongst us and the ummah at large. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate this hardship and suffering and oppression that is being faced by our mother, Muslim brothers and sisters across the globe in various countries, of course, amongst them Palestine, Lebanon, and all these other countries. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samiul alim wa tuba alayna inna ka anta tawabur rahim. ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك العافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يأمرك بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكر الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قيم الصلاة